Yeah, you know, Natasha, this is unprecedented because what the Biden administration has done is give American systems that are in our stockpile that we could potentially use to Taiwan out of concern that China is threatening a potential invasion. Uh, typically, there are long uh, delays in providing military systems to foreign governments through a foreign military sales program. And there's one of almost $20 billion that has been approved to go to Taiwan. Uh, but clearly, there's a sense of urgency now. And this is akin to what we see with the U.S. providing munitions and other weapons and a, a very high level to Ukraine, uh, that they need supplies now. And so the alert is on. Uh, there's a concern that China could potentially invade. And so this is done to provide reassurance to Taiwan, as well as to hopefully deter China from making any moves that, that could lead to a major war. Uh, in, in the Pacific. Do you get the sense that this is in response to some specific intelligence that we are not privy to, or is this just something deeper that's been fomenting for a very long time? Yeah, I think it's a combination of two things. A, it's about getting ahead of a potential threat, and there really are concerns that over time, China will make a move on Taiwan. Uh, unclear as to exactly when, but what the, the Biden administration doesn't want to have happen is get caught flat-footed, similar to what happened with Ukraine, where while there was a recognition Russia was going to invade, Ukraine didn't have the kind of weaponry it needed to defend itself. So getting ahead of that. But yes, I, you know, China has not come to the table in a constructive way. Secretary of State Blinken has met in Beijing. He has tried to get our defense secretary to meet with their defense minister. China doesn't want to do that, and it continues to invade a uh, space that Taiwan views as its own. So uh, the alarm bells are on, and, and right now, it's clear Biden's uh, team doesn't believe that they can wait on China's uh, decision, whenever that may be. And while we have you, let's talk about the war in Ukraine. We are seeing some reports now that as Ukraine's counteroffensive continues and Russia is abandoning some land, that Russia is potentially leaving behind hundreds of thousands of landmines that are sowed into the soil. Can you talk about the yeah. potential impact there? Yeah, it, it's a diabolical cost of war, these landmines. And this is what Russia has done, is they've essentially made Ukraine uh, an explosive every step that one takes. And this uh, is making it a laborious offensive by Ukraine. Doesn't mean that Ukraine can't manage it, but it basically means that Ukraine has to go incredibly slow and demine everything. It's really the kind of, of behavior and war that uh, we all had hoped we had gotten away from. Trench warfare, warfare, land wars in Europe, uh, there's still ordinance to this day from World War One that's exploding and harming people. And, uh, and, and this is unfortunately what Russia has done is they've turned uh, this country, this beautiful country, into a patch of landmines that can kill people at any time. Yeah, and, and what can be an issue for decades and decades to come. Um, exactly. Fi finally, I do want to turn to the situation with U.S. soldier Travis King apparently being detained by North yeah. Korea after he made that inexplicable decision to sprint across the demilitarized zone into that country. Um, what is the difference and concern about an American being held by a country like North Korea versus a country like Russia, which is what we've seen much more often in the, in the headlines? Lines recently. Well, despite all of the problems with Russia, the, the dictatorship and Vladimir Putin's horrific behavior towards his neighbors and his own people, he tries at least to create some semblance of a rule of law, a system in the court, and then is willing to engage in trades for for uh, uh, prisoners. That's not the case with North Korea. There are no there there are no uh, systems in place. They're not trying to imply that they have a rule of law or a system of justice. And we've seen Americans captured in the North Korea. They've been stuck there for years, uh, some coming back deceased. And, and so with North Korea, the leverage is minimal, and it's going to require really high-level attention. Okay. Always appreciate the context. Thank you so much, Joel Rubin. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Natasha.